God of War has one of the most beautifully rendered gaming worlds there is on the market. From the glittering waters of the Lake of Nine to the perilous peaks of Jotunheim. Oh, I'm a poet and I didn't know it. In just Midgard alone, players are faced with expansive and detailed scenery that truly makes it feel like we're living in a carefully written tale of Norse mythology. Whilst glorious landscapes and gruff heroes are all part and parcel of a grand story, it wouldn't be anything without the terrifying monsters that lie in wait around the edges. Picked straight from old legends, the undead hordes and giant scaly creatures that cross Kratos' path are some of the most interesting parts of the game both good for practicing combo moves on and brushing up on your old world knowledge of Norse beasties. Since I have been incessantly pushing this weird enemies title with everything from Silent Hill to Fallout 76 covered on the channel, I'm going to unofficially christen this series the Monster Manual of What Culture Gaming. So let me know in the comments if you have any other series you want me to dig through and I can continue blurting these out as regular programming. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? For now though, I'm Ash, the Dungeon Master from What Culture Gaming, and these are the 8 weirdest God of War enemies and what they represent. 8. Nightmares These horrible floating eyes with extended tentacles, while simple, are some of the weirdest looking creatures you'll encounter whilst playing God of War. Written in the bestiary as being reminiscent of the mare in Old Norse folklore, the origin of the creature is of a malicious entity that sits on the chests of people as they sleep, inducing bad dreams and fitful rest in the process. Since they can possess enemies around them and make them far stronger and more resilient to damage, that legend seems to have been distilled into a monster that makes the terrifying attacking hordes even harder to deal with, as if in a nightmare themselves. Floating dreamlike through the battlefield and pretty easy to take out, the nightmare's fragility seems reminiscent of their power being rooted in manipulating the minds of others, as what's a nightmare in reality when you're not asleep. Instead of squatting on a chest, these tentacled abominations wrap themselves around aggressive foes, taking the key idea of the mare and spinning it into a supportive force for other bad guys. The giant eye is also important, perhaps representative of being able to see into the minds of its enemies to become a personalized horror when attacking. They're also reminiscent of beholders from Dungeons & Dragons lore, a spell-casting floating sphere defined by its one central eye. It's a nice little nod to the fantasy title that defined much of what we see in broader gaming now. 7. The Ancients one of the first ancients you encounter in God of War, the Soul Eater and his stony pals are hulking rock golems that fire elements from their chest, exposing a weakness that Kratos can take advantage of by knocking pieces off and chucking them back inside. The ancients as a whole have existed since the beginning of time in their rockin' bodies, with Soul Eaters being ones that have gotten corrupted along the way and now feed on the life force of the creatures that they kill. Looking directly at their appearance then, that these monsters are quite simply humanoid rock formations lends itself pretty nicely to the ancient's protection of nature itself. Imbued with the power of the elements in a way that suggests they are Mother Nature's vanguard against any and all that would desecrate the world that they reside in. This seems even more likely when you take into account that the beasts are harmless unless you get in their way. If you antagonize them, then they fight back. Otherwise, they're happy to stomp around their own territories doing their thing in peace. A part of the old world and deeply connected to its beginnings, ancients are a reminder that the environment itself is infinitely strong and won't go down without a fight. 6. Tatzel Worms one of the more monstrous enemies to crop up in battle, tatzel worms are part lizard, part cat, embellished with a poisonous barb on their tails or in their throats to shoot horrible green phlegm at anyone that gets too close. Interestingly enough, these are pulled pretty much straight from their source, which is a representation reinforced by real-life sightings in Europe as early as the 1700s. Paying homage to the heart attack inducing fright one man endured after witnessing the creature, the tatzel worms of God of War can burrow underground and appear at will, popping up to disastrous consequences if not blocked quickly enough. The monsters are also a staple feature of the journey up the mountain, reinforcing their real life origin homeland of the Alps. All in all though, considering Kratos sees his dual heritage with the gods and his choice to live his life as a man as a monstrous conception, 
the tatzel worm's combination of two normal creatures into something entirely terrifying and, importantly filled with rage if their aggression is anything to go by, feels like a mirroring of our protagonist's internal perception of himself. Not quite one or the other, and condemned to a life of violence as well as being poisonous to those around them, the two have more in common than it might seem on the surface. 5. Trolls the trolls are the most recurrent boss fights throughout the game, cropping up at important points throughout Kratos and Atreus' journey to come and clobber them with a giant runic pillar. Another enemy linked to an elemental power, the specific runes they carry imbue them with frost or fire or other such worldly abilities, used to power up attacks that see them try and squash Kratos under a stone. Trolls appear in plenty of iterations of folklore, steeped in Norse history and often combined with the Jotun for their imposing size. So of course, God of War's version stands impressively tall, the main deviation from the norm being that they have giant tusks. As these guys are flesh-eating monsters and often noted man-eaters in a historical context, the designers have highlighted their mouths as weapons, with literal giant blades protruding from their faces as a pretty clear marker they will tear you apart and eat the pieces. Wielding stone is also reminiscent of the trolls' aversion to sunlight, something that turns them into rock if they're caught out when the sun rises. Both the Hobbit and Troll Hunter show this in film form too. 4. Ogres Fantasy worlds are always prone to an ogre or two. Usually massive, unintelligent creatures hell-bent on destruction, the ogres of God of War are one and same with what we'd expect from the namesake. They might not look anything like Shrek, but they do have layers, and most definitely don't want you going anywhere near their swamp or mountaintop hideaway. Either way, they aren't friendly. In-game, ogres largely take on the appearance of gorillas, similar in almost every way apart from the scales and spines that run along their backs. Most mythological ogres are pretty much the same as the ogres in-game, as with the tatzel worm, there's interesting parallels that can be drawn between Kratos and this enemy too. Ogres are fierce and enraged, fast when moving around, and ridiculously powerful when delivering attacks, much like our own beloved heroes central to God of War's story. They can pull boulders out the ground and launch them into battle, which is almost identical to Kratos' own Spartan Rage upgrade that can be purchased on the skill menu, and run almost exclusively on their will to kill, maim, and destroy in battle, even if it harms others on their side in the process. Kratos putting these monsters down feels reflective of him facing up to his own internal rage, especially when they come decked out in the same red paint job too. 3. Hrazlir and Dragons Not your average scaly flying lizard, the first dragon we meet in this world is tattered and in ruin, breathing lightning in place of fire and generally looking a bit worse for wear than the modern day iterations fans are used to. An old, rare race that's mostly been forgotten to time, it is fair for this monster to be in bad shape. You probably would be too if you've been stuck in an abandoned mountain for years on end. As for Razlir in particular then, and I am very much guessing at that pronunciation, the relationship between the first dragon encounter and the sap of the world tree isn't a coincidental one, with an old story of Nidhogg featuring a dragon that gnaws on the root of Idrasil as an attempt to get through to another world. Razlir's inherent violence and aggression is an extension of Nidhogg's evil nature, noted also as one who feasts upon villains who have been condemned to hell. You are what you eat, after all. Apparently, this Nidhogg is intrinsically tied to the end of times, destined to burst forth from the underworld bearing all the corpses is eaten as weapons in the final war of Ragnarok. Considering Krasilir's half-dead appearance, this influence seems to be written pretty clearly across his decaying body. That his name translates to the Terror only seems to finalise the link between the two. 2. Svartalfur and Dark Elves Forget the pointy ears and the sexy cheekbones, the Alfheim-dwelling iterations of light and dark magic embody an entirely different take on the usually majestic elves of fantasy worldbuilding, opposing the light elves of the Ring Temple in their ghost-like grace with wings, horns, and a penchant for claustrophobic and gloomy spaces. In essence, they're insects, flitting around incessantly and swarming in group combat. Dokkalfur, which is Dark Elves, and Yusselfur, which is Light Elves, are again found in Old Norse mythology, with the Dokkalfur residing underground in an opposing force to their light counterparts. Focusing on their earthly inhabitants in God of War then, their bug-like appearance and attacks are reflective of their original home where no light shines, kind of like giant humanoid moths intent on making their world a more habitable place for their spooky kind. 
Considering how visually similar the light elves are to angels, it is a fair extension to look at the dark elves as those cast out of the spiritual elven home of Alfheim, related in Christian terms to demons and evil spirits. Svartalfur himself as King of the Dark Elves is an extension of Satan in that case, and with his emaciated skeletal look and giant horns rising from his crown, he does a good job of looking the part too. 1. Revenants Too swift to hit with your racks and laughing in the face of hard combat, revenants are a level up from your average foe. Functioning somewhat like a shaman to the rest of the masses, legend has it that they're witches who traded their souls off to become more powerful at magic. Eventually, they end up losing their humanity, but they're still really good at spellcasting even if they are undead spirits, so that's something. With long black hair and a wooden staff, the revenants of the game capture the witchy look well, moving in a cloud of smoke as a representation of them straddling two worlds, no longer human, but not Draugr either. The spines along the revenants' back are particularly interesting when you take a look at some of the nastier ways to die in Norse tradition. For fans of the Vikings TV show, the Blood Eagle was the practice of breaking someone's ribs from the back and pulling their lungs out from the inside to create wings, something the Revenant's pointed bones and hunched back reflects as she swoops around the battlefield. The long history of witches being executed in horrible fashion over the years, from being hanged to burned alive at the stake, lends itself nicely to this visceral Norse punishment being their final goodbye to the world after losing their souls to magic. As if being condemned to an afterlife of hanging out with grunting zombies wasn't enough. And that's our list. What other weird enemies do you want to hear about? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I've been Ash, and this has been What Culture Gaming. Make sure to subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this, and don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. Thanks for watching.